Hmm. Yeah. Then uh why measure we write? Why measure <laughs> <coughs> so um, for immeasurable we last time we discussed about the uh, immeasurable of the equanimity and immeasurable of uh, briefly about love right immeasurable love so now uh, today we discuss about the uh, Immeasurable uh, compassion, right? Immeasurable compassion, right? So uh, there is a <coughs> there is a dif difference between the immeasurable love and immeasurable compassion. Immeasurable. So. When we talk about the immeasurable love, immeasurable love is uh, wishing, wishing to have, uh, wishing to have love, wishing to have happiness for all the beings. And then uh, about the immeasurable compassion, the wishing to, the wishing to free sentient beings from the suffering. Right. So although in this, you know, in this four immeasurable, you know, immeasurable practice, although there's a, you know, when, when we try to read, there's a, some, you know, order, right? Immeasurable, uh, immeasurable love come first and then immeasurable compassion, immeasurable joy, immeasurable uh, economy. So there's some kind of, you know, order, right? But when we try to uh, put into practice, you know, when we try to visualize, then immeasurable economy is uh, usually done first, right? Which is then followed by, uh, which is then followed by either, you know, uh, meditation on love or, uh, meditation on compassion, you can do it alternative way, right? One can do it in alternative way. One do it in alternative way and then, you know, afterwards, then one do the immeasurable joy, meditation on immeasurable joy. <coughs> Right. So last time we discussed about the immeasurable love, you know, uh, if you try to review, uh, review briefly, immeasurable love is just uh, wishing all sentient beings to have uh, love, right? Uh, we are not talking about, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, we get the uh, mixed, uh, we get the, uh, such impression that uh, love is, <clears throat> Uh, love is something, you know, uh, related with, you know, love, uh, something related with attachment, right? So here, we are not uh, dealing with that kind of love. When we talk about the love here, immeasurable love, we are <laughs> talking about the, we are talking about the unbiased love, unconditional love, right? Which is not based on conditions, you know, this condition and that condition. It is some kind of universal, right? Universal universal love <coughs> just wishing to have you know joy and happiness and that is really uh, this uh, kind of love can be uh, can be can be cultivated on the basis uh, on the basis of the fact that all sentient beings desire love all sentient beings desire happiness and do not want suffering. And also, all sentient beings, um, uh, uh, all sentient beings are very grateful to oneself 
and also where there has been one's mother, right? Safe. So therefore, there is very enough basis that we can uh, cultivate. Uh, we can cultivate uh, the thought cherishing others, right? So we are working on the cultivating the love on the on the very fundamental belief that we cherish others, right? Because cherishing others, you know, uh, when, whether we talk about, you know, cherishing others or, you know, it cannot, it cannot you know, uh, guarantee that, uh, you know, cherishing others can bring direct benefit. But the first benefit goes to oneself, you know, practitioner. First benefit goes, you know, purely to the practitioner, right? So therefore, then, you know, we, it is on that basis that we really, you know, try to uh, practice love. When we talk about practicing love, then it, you know, it involves, you know, uh, giving joy and happiness to others, right? Giving joy and happiness to others. Because when we talk about, you know, again, giving joy and happiness to others, you know, every action has its equal and opposite reaction, right? So when we give something to others, we get the something in return, right? So this and um, the, this the law, right? one of the Newton's law, right? <laughs> right. And, and Jason Baba very clearly and stated that <clears throat> By fulfilling the well-being of others, by fulfilling the well uh, welfare of others, one's own uh, welfare, one's own well-being is accomplished as a byproduct. So this very, very you know, unique, you know, very important. So there are a lot of you know many stories you know relating to that. So we don't go. <laughs> Right. Now we talk about uh, as, uh, the immeasurable uh, compassion. <clears throat> when we talk about the immeasurable compassion, uh, When we talk about the immeasurable, compa immeasurable compassion, we have to take into account uh, the four uh, four things, right? Four things. First, you know, we we need to have such a feeling that in all this, not only the immeasurable compassion, but also all the you know four economies, the four immeasurables. immeasurable uh, love, immeasurable compassion, immeasurable joy, immeasurable. Um, equanimity. In all this, there are four uh, factors. <coughs> the first thing is, in the case of the uh, immeasurable love, how wonderful it would be if all sentient beings have, if all sentient beings be freed from suffering. Number one. This, this kind of thinking, this kind of thought, is what is called as immeasurable aspiration. How wonderful if all the sentient beings, if all the sentient beings to be freed from all the suffering. Then number two is, may all sentient beings, may all sentient beings be freed from suffering. Number two. This is, this is immeasurable inspiration. Right. <coughs> In the first, how wonderful if all sentiments have uh, to be freed from suffering. You just aspire, you know, it's just, you know, you are just wishing. In the second, 
May all sentient beings be freed from suffering. That now becomes more, you know, powerful. Your mind becomes more powerful. Right. So inspiration. You derive inspiration from this thought. <coughs> then number three is now the three is may uh, may I be you know uh, uh, may I be, be may I be able to do so may I be able to do so now there's a sense of responsibility comes sense of responsibility comes the sense of voluntariness comes much more powerful right <coughs> So then we feel we are shouldered with the responsibility for freeing and liberating sentient beings from the suffering. <coughs> right. So this is now immeasurable. The third one is what is called as immeasurable uh, the immeasurable pure intention yeah. immeasurable pure intention yeah. right now you now we are <laughs> Now we are uh, uh, shouldered with the responsibility for freeing the suffering and liberating the suffering of others. <coughs> if we are, uh, if we have all the responsibility, right? Uh, if not through, you know, some kind of burden, you know, you you have to do this. Not not that way, you know, not that way, uh, but really, you know, taking a delight, taking a pleasure in doing this. Right. Now, how, how, how do we go about, how do we go about liberating the suffering of others, right? Suffering of others. <coughs> so now here, we have to first understand, right? We need to understand in what ways sentient beings are suffering, in what ways we are suffering. Right. So now, I think there are different ways of you know uh, going through suffering. There are different ways. There are many different ways, but principally, but mainly, you know, much of the suffering is caused by distortions in thinking. What we call as you know. Uh, misapprehension and misconceptions, right? Misapprehension and mis uh, misapprehension and misconceptions, and you know the underestimate the 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 mind of underestimate the mind of overestimate all these things involved. You know, much of the suffering caused by all these things. When we talk about the uh, suffering, I mainly refer to the mental suffering, right? Mental agony. We call mental pain, mental pain. Right. And then within this, you know, within this, all this, you know, the misconception, misapprehension, now there is a kind of, you know, the belief, you know, the belief system, believing things to be, although things are impermanent, all the things are transient. But we believe things to be something long lasting and eternal and permanent. This one. Another one is because <coughs> all the things are in the nature of the dissatisfaction, you know, but we believe we believe things to be the supreme pleasurable, source of pleasurable. And one thing. Although things lack independent existence, right? Things have no Things have no essence, you know, but we believe things to be something uh, <laughs> having some kind of essence. 
So all this, you know, contribute tremendously for giving pain, you know, mental suffering. <coughs> right. But then I, as we all know, that there are two kinds of, you know, uh, pleasurable experiences. Pleasurable experiences at sensory level and pleasurable experiences at mental level. Right. Similarly, there are pleasurable experiences at uh, unpleasurable experiences. Unpleasurable experiences at sensory level and also the pleasurable experiences at uh, mental level. Uh, many of the, you know, many of the displeasure, you know, what we call as displeasure or unpleasurable experiences, unpleasurable experiences at sensory level can be, can be removed, get rid of, get rid of through external factors, right? Through external factors. Right. Just take a simple example, right? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Because I'm hungry, I'm suffering. Right. Because I'm hungry. So because of this hungriness, I, uh, I you know, get some displeasure. Unpleasurable experiences is being felt. This unpleasurable experiences is only sensorial, you know, unpleasurable experience. Sensorial. <laughs> sensorial unpleasurable experiences, right? <clears throat> right. So, in order to dispel this unpleasurable experiences at sensorial, you know, I need to eat food. <laughs> Simple, right? This is. Uh, eliminated by you know external facilities uh, eating food when there is a food i eat my hungriness is dispelled displeasure dispelled right and then when i'm if you try to use some common sense right if i'm hungry <laughs> try to meditate <laughs> <laughs> right. This is one thing. And then if you try to, you know, go a little bit about the, you know, uh, what are sensory pleasures, you know. <clears throat> For example, right. For example, you know, uh, I see very, you know, uh, a pleasant object, right. Say a magic show, right. I go to magic show. I go to magic show. Magic show is full of fun, you know. So, so entertaining, right? So while my, you know, I look at the magic show, you know, I'm so I'm dissolved. I'm immersed in the show. At at that very point, I get some pleasure, right? That pleasure is sensory pleasure, not mental pleasure. Similarly, for example, I'm hearing to some, uh, you know, pleasant music, you know, music or good, you know, very nice song, you know. <clears throat> when I hear or, you know, uh, the very uh, pleasant and very nice song, I also, you know, I'm so immersed, you know. I'm so immersed in the music, you know. No, we just uh, take some very simple example, you know. While I'm so immersed in the music, even if you try to eat something, you don't feel in taste. You don't feel in taste because my mind is completely dissolved into the music, right? So there's no taste of the food. Right. 
So therefore, there's a very beautiful, you know, what is called as very beautiful, uh, uh, you know, uh, the practice, you know, uh, be at the present moment, you know, the what is called as in the Mahamudra meditation and the Dzogchen meditation. Be at the present moment. Try to be, try to be at the present, right? Sometimes what we do is we do, you know, we use all the five senses and then the, we don't taste the life. Because we are using all the senses, you know. There's no, there's no essence is lost, you know. For example, why we eat food, you know. We, Although we are supposed to uh, enjoy the you know flavor of the food, but then we are doing another thing while eating. We are doing another thing. So something like this. <clears throat> right. So when we hear the very you know peaceful music, or you know, we can totally d dissolve into it. So this, uh, at that point, that we derive some pleasure. That pleasure is also sensorial, uh, the pleasurable experiences at a sensorial level. Again, for example, uh, you know, for example, we are reading uh, uh, um, Uh, we are doing, and then sometimes we hear the bad news, right? So again, you know, unpleasurable experiences, unpleasurable experiences. This is unpleasurable experience at sensory level. And then smell also, you know, smell. You know, the, like the smell, the very nice smell, you know, uh, the natural like <laughs> perfume. Right. The lotus, that different jasmine, you know, the different kinds of perfume. So this, you know, also very, you know, uh, we get some pleasure, right? When we, you know, in, in, when we smell. So that is also at sensory level. And then sometimes during sunny weather, right? Sunny weather, uh, you know, skin is burned because of the hotness of the uh, sun. We feel, you know, skin burn. Then we have some unpleasurable experiences. That is sensorial. Sensorial unpleasurable experiences, right? And then, and then we put some, you know, uh, the eyes, you know. I see, we apply icy water or we take shower, right? So, we get some pleasure, right? That is pleasure is pleasurable experiences at sensorial level. Right. And also then, then there are, you know, many kind of distortions, you know, related to sensorial, sensorial eye, ear, all this sensorial, right? Sensory level, right? So this distortion, you know, um, in some way has not to do with the mental, you know, mental thing, M mental thing. Just take an example, right? <clears throat> For example, uh, you are traveling in the train, you know, or, you know, you are, we are traveling in the bus, you know, and we are trying because of this, uh, you know, bus traveling at a very, you know, speed, going through very speed. Again, you know, we see the, you know, the things moving, right? The trees moving, the, the buildings moving, the houses moving too, right? Along, moving along. So I discussed this with Sunday class, right? So. So then, right, so these distortions, right, this distortion, and also sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes in some cases, you know, we hear the things, what sometimes called a hallucination, right? <clears throat> we hear the things which does not exist. We see the things which does not exist. 
And also some people have some problem, you know, caused by, you know, there's one specific disease, you know, which causes the hair falling, you know. All the hair is not falling, but the, the, because of the disease, they see the hair is falling. Right. <coughs> and also because of the strong jundis, you know, so strong jundis, you see things very yellow, everything yellow. And also because, you know, so all these distortions, you know, all these distortions cultivating the, cultivating something, you know, cultivating the, all this distortion in order to remove this or distortion, in order to remove these distortions. Just trying to uh, meditate. Maybe, maybe helpful. Maybe helpful, but not the you know solution. Because why these are why these are not solution is because all these distortions has nothing you know nothing to do with the nothing to do with the uh, what is called as when we talk uh, there are two uh, there are two kinds of you know. Uh, Mental thoughts. There are two kinds of mental thoughts, right? There are two kinds of mental. It's very important to under <laughs> to know, right? Very important under to know. There are two kinds of mental thoughts. One is, one is, uh, you know, uh, co conceptual thought, conceptual mental thought, conceptual. Whereas many of the distortions, which is related to the sensorial perception, sensorial perception, right? For example, like we take give the example, right? When we go into the train, you know, things are moving. All these are sensory perceptions. So it has to do with the non-conceptual mental thought. Here, for example, things, we believe things to be permanent. All the things are not permanent. We believe things to have some you know, intrinsic reality. You know, intrinsic reality, absolute reality. We believe things to be pleasurable experience, although it's not pleasure by experience. So these are conceptual thoughts here. These are conceptual thoughts. In order to get rid of this, this, you know, we are suffering in some way because of this, you know, conceptual thoughts, miscon misconceptions. And in order to remove these things, we try to go to hospital. <laughs> it's not the right thing. No way. It's not the right thing. Now, whereas on the other hand, for example, right, those, you know, kind of, you know, non-conceptual non thoughts, you know, non-conceptual thoughts, which now has to do with some to do with disease, then hospital is the best. Right. For example, in some cases, you know, for example, like hallucination, hallucination, sometimes caused by alcohol, sometimes caused by liquor, drugs, all this causes hallucination, right? So it has to do with some external thing. So <laughs> this need to be <laughs> removed through, you know, by curing, curing the disease, curing the illnesses, not through meditation. In some way may help, help, help. So those, so those, those thoughts, for example, you know, uh, destructive emotions, right? Destructive emotions, harmful emotions, negative emotions. All these negative emotions, in order to get rid of them, in order to reduce them, only through the reduction of these negative emotions and destructive emotions, which make us unhappy. These can be get rid of only through only through cultivating the opposing force, opposite force. Right. 
and then the also the <laughs> hair falling, you know, it's not saying, oh, I'm hair falling better, you know. <laughs> it's better to get treated at the hospital, right? <laughs> Just, you know, uh, hair falling, you know, you have this kind of vision, you know, you have this mistaken vision, but thinking that, oh, hair is not falling. I think for the beginner, difficult, you know, try to, you know, visualize, right? right. When you go to the snowy mountain, you know, when you go to the snowy mountain, uh, you, we put the, we put the black glass, right? Or, you know, we put the blue glass, right? Blue glass. And then when we put the black glass or blue glass, we see the whole snow green, so snow black. The color of the snow black or color of the snow blue. And then at, this, at the same time, we don't want to see the snowy uh, mountain as a blue, right, black. If we do not want to see the snowy mountain as a blue or black color, we better take, take the glasses, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then, although we do not want to see the snowy mountain as a blue color or black color, if you continue to, you know, wear this spectacle, you know, glass, it's no use, right? <laughs> <coughs> right. So therefore, you know, now for example, <coughs> this up the um, maybe I can also tell this the I was also reminded, you know, some you know incident, you know, people People also informing, yeah, also, you know, told me that, you know, for example, like uh, in the family, you know, uh, somebody uh, passed away, you know, and then what they, <laughs> what they do say is, yeah, oh, I see the, you know, deceased person, right? I saw the deceased person, uh, they are talking to me, something like this, right? In the dream, there is so this, the dream person. <laughs> I heard many times, you know, from people. Right. So, this is hallucination, right? People have any idea? <laughs> Again, this, you know, if we have some, you know, uh, understanding of this is it is very helpful <coughs> because otherwise people keep on telling different different stories yeah right <laughs> there is one buddha um, there's one buddha sutra called what happens after the death mm. and then uh, Mm, uh, somebody in that sutra, you know, cited some stories, you know, in that sutra, somebody died, you know, and then they are making, you know, a food offering, all these things. Uh, and then, uh, you know, food offering and other, other things, right? Uh, maybe offering the clothes, dress, all these things. And then uh, this uh, question was being raised to Buddha, right? Uh, are, they, are there any benefit for these things? Then uh, Buddha said, uh, they are not much of benefit. This is what Buddha said. Right. Then, <clears throat> then uh, some of the people, you know, uh, then, but then there are some in the rituals, there are some, you know, prayer rituals, you know, we do, you know, after somebody passed away, we do all these ritual prayers. Then there, 
then there's a specific of, uh, rituals you know which is uh, which involves you know making offering to offering of food to the you know uh, deceased right so therefore now here the food we we make the food offering especially for the benefit of the deceased this involves generosity the the the, the offering of giving the offering of food giving then by doing this offering of food giving it definitely helped the deceased in the next life that is can you know gain more merit gain more resources Right. So, Buddha said, yeah, in that case, yeah, definitely, you know, without any reason, you know, making offering, it won't help. However, if you dedicate this, you know, for the benefit of the deceased, it definitely help for the deceased. <coughs> And then, uh, and then people say, Oh, we hardly believe what you said. People said to Buddha, So, uh, we really, you know, uh, mm, we really uh, want to do something for uh, Buddha uh, that give us so convincing, which make us so convincing, you know, what you have said. So from each of the family, there are some family, right? In the area, in the town, there are a uh, few group family. So they select, they collect a seed, you know, one sprout, you know, sprout from one family, another family, another family. Huge, you know. And then with each seed, you know, they they make the mark. They do some some marking and also wrote the name of that person, you know, in a, another bowl. They put, you know, the name of the person on the one another bowl. There is one seed, you know, sprout collected from all the you know people. And then what only do this is they also, you know, a great deal of trees, you know, they uh, they burn, they burn and then they, you know, reduce to the ash. So before burn, they put the name of the tree, this tree, this tree, that tree, that tree, name. And then now Buddha was given, now you choose. Buddha was asked to choose, you know, uh, which uh, ash is belong to which tree, right? Which uh, seed belongs to the uh, the per, name of the person? So, so Buddha, without you know, uh, without any making any effort, through effortlessly, you know, Buddha selected unmistakably each of these things. Then finally they are being convinced. Now we do believe you. What you said. Right. So in this sutra, <coughs> beautifully it says, you know. So sometimes you say, oh, oh. For example, in the one family, uh, the person by the name of person A, you know, person A died. And uh, in that family, we say, oh, I saw the person A, a few, few days later. Is this person A? Right. It can never be person A. Because the, the person A is in the intermediate state, right? Intermediate state. In the middle state body and our body is completely totally different. We have gross body. We rely on gross food. Right. 
Whereas the intermediate state, their body is so subtle, you know, like wind body. Wind, no. unobstructed. So, how can we, we cannot see the something like unobstructed body? But then who is that, you know, person A? <laughs> right. What we do, did see, right? If that is not the real person, you know, deceased person, then who? In the Sutra, then in the Sutra, uh, uh, you know, it says, in the limitless universe, in the limitless of the universe, they are limitless of the spirit, filling the entire space. And then, not only this spirit, there are many other forms of spirit, you know. Right. There are many other spirits, you know, yakshas, you know. Uh, uh, we call uh, something like ghost, you know, right? Like, um, spirit. <clears throat> so these spirit, you know, they do have some kind of uh, clairvoyance. They do have some kind of clairvoyance, certain degree of clairvoyance. Say they exactly know the family, the biography, <laughs> so some history about the family. So they take every opportunity to harm, right? So therefore, they take the form of the deceased. And even in some sleep, when we do sleep, we are some say we dream of the dead person, right? In fact, it is nothing but the evil spirit polluted your mind. So that's why you see the dream, the person in the dream. So therefore, in the tradition, you know, uh, uh, 49, you know, we do some purification puja, in which now all these issues involved, yeah, these things are explained. Right. So the, so the point is, our point is, you know, there is many of the, you know, uh, many of the suffering, you know, uh, or what is called as unpleasurable experiences at sensory level can be eliminated, can be overcome by relying on the external factors, external, mainly through external factors, although, all the meditation, these things may help, may be helpful, but mainly the external factors can help. Whereas when you talk about the, you know, those, you know, destructive emotions, you know, which are, which are conceptual thoughts. So these can, cannot be get rid of by taking medicine. <laughs> there is no such thing called anti-hatred. There's an antidepressant. Antidepressant medicine, medication, right? There's no kind of anti hatred, anti jealousy, anti competition, <laughs> anti angry, right? anti confusion. There, there's no such kind of medicine produced. Right? So, this can be only be cultivated through, can be get rid of or can be removed or at least you know reduced through cultivating the opposing force there's no other thing there's no other solution other than cultivating the opposing force <coughs> right now here now we may wonder right now for example uh, Believing the things to be permanent, believing that things to be some kind of independent existence, you know, absolute, absolute. Right. 
Oh, this cup. Oh, so nice, you know. Very good, you know. Like this. We always think there is the cup, you know, that you can call, that you can catch, that you can, you know, hold on. It's so nice. We believe the cup is from there, from its own side. This cup is from its own side. <laughs> because of this believing, you know, because we believe the things, the cup is there. <laughs> so this. <laughs> This is another way, this kind of belief is another way for giving rise to another suffering. <laughs> right, so now take an example, right? <coughs> Something which I we, which we can see better to take example, you know, not outside. You know. <laughs> First, um, yeah, this can. Okay, right. Oh, so good, right? Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. One person say. Oh, this cup is so beautiful, you know, it's a brand, you know, it's a brand company, you know. Let's see. <laughs> right. Which is the best company? Best <laughs> company producing the cup. <laughs> right. Uh, so we say. And then another person come. Oh, this cup is very expensive, you know. It's porcelain. Right. Another person say, "Oh, this uh, this is very hard to get." <laughs> and another person you know, come, right? So this is uh, yeah something very unique, many many good qualities that other. No. Just the handle itself is you know. Is something so special. So now, before we don't have any, you know, the uh, uh, kind of attachment, right? We don't have attachment. Then uh, people keep on, you know, saying like these things, right? First, maybe say, I have 10% uh, attachment to this, 10% 10, 10 attachment. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, how suffering is, how we, you know, get suffering. How we experience suffering. Not only this cup, every other thing. Oh, now, now because of, now this is what is called exaggeration, exaggeration. I have, I have 10 person attachment right when I first see, but then, you know, my, my friends, you know, my friends, you know, uh, exaggerate, you know, the desirable qualities of this cup. Which make my attachment goes up. Say 80%. My attachment is in the, uh, uh, you know, increased to 80%. Then, then I also involved, you know, thinking about many good qualities. Oh, this one, this one, nice, and so very good. So this. Right. <laughs> we, are in, no, we are exaggerating the qualities, exaggerating. Then, then what happened? Then my attachment is 80, right? Mm, uh, right, 90, 92, then? My also, I also exaggerate, you know, thinking about these qualities. Maybe then uh, nine person in nine point ninety nine increased. Now hundred out ninety nine point ninety nine out of hundred. Right. 
no, take now, no, it's no dangerous. Now is the danger comes. It's on the verge of dangerous. No, we all know that this cup is impermanent. We all know that this cup, the cup is empty of intrinsic existence, inherent existence. Right? This cup may break, this cup may be stolen or lost. Right. So, I have 99.99 attachment, right? That means, that means I am not ready to separate from this cup at all cost, any cost. And as a matter of fact, on the other hand, we all know this cup is impermanent. This cup is empty of inherent existence. Therefore, this cup can be breakable, can break. Once it breaks, what happened? Once it is stolen, what happened? This attachment, right? Because of this attachment, I develop a craving, craving, you know. Such a craving, you know, that I don't want to separate from this cup at all cost, at any cost. So this is a craving. While I'm, while I'm having that kind of craving, strong craving, on the other hand, if this cup power will break or stolen, I get 99.99% suffering, mental suffering. Right, deep, you know, kind of distress, you know. Very unpre unhappy, very unpleasurable experience. Because I already exaggerated, I exaggerated the qualities you know, which I'm not ready. Tremendous amount of, you know. <laughs> right, right now I'm using this cup, what can I explain, you know, extend to everything? And then especially to those, you know, relating to the person is more, you know, then, yeah, uh, more risky. So this, uh, so uh, right now, not only you know uh, the cup, you know, believing this cup to be permanent, believing this cup to be you know uh, some kind of you know intrinsic reality. So this believing give rise to you know a lot of you know unnecessary, unnecessary you know uh, unhappiness, unnecessary you know. Play unpleasurable experiences. We, we don't need, you know, because to be to, to be to some extent, you know, to some extent, you know, uh, we have our own problem, you know, we have enough problem, you know, because we have not a, we have not the body of the you know God and goddesses. We don't have this body. We have such a body which is subject to you know very so fragile. And then we have already, you know, we already do have some kind of, you know, a dualistic, you know, mind, very many mistaken mind. We already have do this, then why do we, you know, create, you know, why do we, you know, uh, uh, Why do we get into these in distortions? You know? No need. No need to be honest. Right. And then this, you know, many of these, you know, mental right. We what we call as these are delusions, you know, delusions. 
Because, because not only this, especially the two, the three main things, three main things, believing things to be permanent, believing things to be permanent, give rise to different kinds of delusions, different kinds of, you know, afflictions, which we don't need, you know, we aspire, we want happiness, you know. And then another thing, we, things are devoid of intrinsic, you know, reality. But then we believe things to be some having some kind of independent existence, you know, solid. There is some kind of solidness, you know. We don't, we don't, because, you know, again, these things, you know, give rise to a lot of afflictions. And then on the other hand, what is called as, you know, self, you know, self-grasping or self-cherishing, you know. Self-cherishing also give rise to different kinds of you know, afflictions, you know. <laughs> a lot of headache, which we don't need, you know. We have our own inner problem. <laughs> so we, why we, do we create all this? You know? If we really looking, that's why, you know, that's why there's a, uh, you know, there's a beautiful saying, right? Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. Why, why holding on, you know, holding on becomes grasping. Grasping then gives rise to a lot of one after the another. One after the another. Better, better let it go, right? Yeah, it's, it's the very good uh, solution, you know. So one is spirit. Yeah. <coughs> what time? 11.20. 11 11.20? 11 yeah. I see. Mm. We haven't finished the, the uh, immeasurable of, uh, of uh, compassion. Immeasurable compassion? Not finished yet. Mm. Mm. So then, yeah, this one. So then, right, now, now these are the suffering, you know, that we want to, these are the, 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 again, you know, it's very important that, you know, when we reflect upon the suffering, some, you know, say, oh, don't talk about the, you know, don't talk about the suffering, you know. If one really, you know, knows, you know, uh, the Buddha's teaching, if one really, you know, knows the Buddha's teaching, just reflecting on the suffering, you know, really, you know, we inspire, encourages. Because now, believing in the permanent things, believing things to be permanent, I'm suffering. Because of the, my, you know, self cherishing attitude or self-centered attitude, I am suffering. Because of, gra <coughs> because of grasping, because of grasping at the I, mind, things to be, to be inherent, intrinsic existence, I am suffering. I am suffering. When we think about this, when we think about how I'm suffering, right? When we think about how I'm tormented by suffering, how I'm tormented by suffering, it really give, you know, really, you know, uh, we develop a sense of renunciation, right? Sense of detachment, sense of detachment, sense of repulsive, you know, repulsiveness. Detached from what? The sense of detached from the prosperity of the samsara. Prosperity of some sort. Now we come to believe these are not reliable. I'm suffering. On the other hand, you want happiness. If you want happiness, why should I suffer? But where do, do this suffering come from? This suffering come from the distortions, distorted distortions of the mental state, mental state, right? And then, <coughs> based based on your own experience of suffering, for oneself, 
it gives rise to the sense of renunciation, sense of detachment, sense of repulsiveness, believing that the prosperity of samsara, no matter how fascinating they are, but in, in reality, in actual reality, these are in the not, not reliable, but in the nature, but compelled, you know, powered, powered by karma and affliction, dissatisfaction. Powered by karma and affliction, so dissatisfaction, unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory, not reliable. That we can rely, that we can, you know, uh, rely f some kind of, you know, uh, the, uh, we can, you know, uh, give the 100% uh, reliable, the reliability. There's no reliability which can last as, which can last as long as space exists. There's no such thing. <laughs> everything is in the everything is in the the subject to subject to subject to change subject to moment momentarily changing right so, <laughs> with this it gives rise to for yourself for yourself it gives rise to the sense of renunciation sense of detachment sense of repulsiveness. <clears throat> the same degree of suffering, how much, how much we are able to, how much we are able to penetrate, how much we are able to penetrate, penetrate the depth of the conditioning suffering for yourself. If you are, if we, if we are able to penetrate, the depthness of the conditioning suffering, all pervasive suffering, 100%. Based on that suffering, how much you are, we are tormenting? Based on that suffering, a qualified, a highly qualified compassion can be extended to entire sentient being, which is now unconditional compassion, unbiased compassion. Right. No, which is beyond the language, which is which is beyond the you know uh, the nationality, the color, race, everything. This compassion. The same suffering I'm suffering. We think, or oh, other sentient beings are also going through the same problem. Because they are also governed by karma and afflictions, they do have afflictions. So these afflictions suffer. Now you have the responsibility to get to get rid of and to liberate them from their suffering. So uh, reflection of suffering does serve two causes. For yourself, it gives rise to a sense of detachment. For others, it give, you are able to cultivate compassion for every, for every living being who has the capacity to feel pain and pleasure. So this is, this is the very, you know, the the uh, so this is how you know uh, the great Indian you know the great masters you know <coughs> the great Indian masters uh, Dharmakirti the Dignak the great philosopher the great thinker the great logician the right and Dharmakirti also Dharmakirti and the great meditator the great yogi. All oh, this presented the Buddha's teaching through this, you know, the beauty, the, 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 beauty, the presentation of the, the, the beauty of the presentation. There's a beauty of the presentation, right? 
because therefore the great this uh, great they are 17 19 17 the great nalinda masters the real the real or ornaments of the buddha's teaching one who these great beings you know uh beautify the buddha's teaching truly beautify the buddha's teaching you know by presenting such an unmiss you know so beauty right <coughs> at one point you know uh Mm. Uh, Jezongaba was doing some retreat, you know. Mm. He was retreat, uh, undertaking some retreat, you know. But then on a on a break time, you know, during the free time, he used to read, you know, uh, the works, you know, the works by Nagar uh, Dharma Gedi. In the, the text, you know, the text which Dharma Gedi uh, wrote trying to you know trying to establish the uh, you know authenticity of the buddha's teaching was the reason the reason and lo logic that he laid upon was so profound so profound that uh, he say the break time you know during the break time he used to read this you know the moment he tried to look into the, you know, try to see this, the tears coming. So impressed, you know, the Zongaba's mind was so impressed. Just such a profundity of, you know, the presentation of the Buddha's teaching, you know, how Buddha traveled through the path, how Buddha, you know, Buddha proceed on the spiritual path. How Buddha achieved enlightenment? Enlightenment. These are purely, you know, provided through reason and pure logic. <coughs> yeah. So, <coughs> one compassion. Uh, one compassion without making any difference, you know, just sending beings one happiness, sending beings really a, a desire, a happiness, they do not uh, want suffering, although they do not want suffering there, but they are do suffer, they are going through suffering, right? So, you just on the fundamental belief, on the fundamental belief that. Sender beings has been your mother. All the sender beings has been your mother. All the sender beings are grateful to you. Sender beings from their own side, just like myself, want happiness. They do not want suffering. So there is an ample reason, there is an abundant reason that you, you really need to, you know. You, you, you are to liberate their suffering, <laughs> liberate from their suffering. Right. This is how there's a one way of cultivating the compassion, the great compassion. <coughs> Another uh, another way of developing compassion is you know, uh, we are talking about great compassion, right? <coughs> so, although sentient beings are in the you know sentient beings are by nature impermanent, right? They go through the process of momentarily changing. But then, because they do not understand, you know, the things to be impermanent, they believe things to be permanent. Because of this permanent thinking, a lot of afflictions, a lot of, you know, destructive emotions arise. These destructive emotions produce unnecessary suffering, mental suffering. So now it is your responsibility to free their mental suffering, which is caused by 
believing things to be permanent. Right. So, on that basis, we, you know, so while you think, you know, while we are thinking, you know, how sentient beings, you know, are going through suffering through the notion, through the mistaken notion that things to be permanent. So with this, while I reflect on this, I develop a compassion. So this great compassion, you know, no, very powerful. This compassion is so powerful because it is based on wisdom. It is based on reason and wisdom. <coughs> then there is another kind of uh, you know suffering. What is suffering called as? Uh, you know suffering which is caused by. Which is you know uh, which is produced by grasping, grasping at my and mine, and grasping at the phenomena. Right. So all the sentient beings are you know by nature devoid and empty of inherent existence, empty of solid. Solidness, empty, <coughs> empty, empty of absolute concreteness. But then again, you know, because of they are confused, because of the misconceptions, they believe things to be they believe things to be true existence, having some kind of the essence, uh, solidness. Because of this, they again. Just different kinds of destructive emotions, you know, negative emotions, afflictions arises, which then result in mental suffering. So, similarly, while I'm thinking about these things, I develop compassion. So, that compassion is now much more powerful, very powerful, because the reason, the reason being involved, the reason being used is more profound. You know, deeply felt experience. So we have this compassion, yeah. Three compassion, right? Although there are different kinds of you know great compassion, but for the time being, I will use only three, right? For the time being, I will use only three. I don't go into actually there are uh, fourteen attributes, you know, uh, for, for noble truth. Sixteen, yeah, sixteen attributes, right? You can relate this great compassion with this, but I don't go into this. I just take the three. No. So if I use the term, you know, Dharma term, the first compassion is called um, the compassion merely focusing on the sentient being. Compassion, the great compassion, merely focusing or merely observing the sentient being, mere sentient being, mere sentient being. <coughs> right. The second compassion is the compassion. Uh, the compassion observing the f uh, phenomena. The third is the compassion observing the uh, unobserved. Conversion observing the unobserved. Unobserved means you know about emptiness, yeah, something about emptiness. <coughs> right. So this is how we can cultivate, you know, one conversion getting more stronger and stronger. Right. Although all these are you know a great compassion, all these are truly uh, you know genuine, a uh, genuine. Uh, the universal and the unbiased compassion, right? But then within these three compassion, there's uh, the degree of strength. 
variety of you know the strength varies the strength varies according to the way you analyze the things the way you analyze how sentient beings suffer or suffering <coughs> right and then <coughs> So this and this in you know, compassion, these these three you know unbiased compassion or uh, unbiased compassion, uh, unconditional compassion, unconditional because it is not given any condition. You just think about the suffering of them. They're wishing to you know. And then the sense you know, um, although even in the Hina in the practitioner right. Hina and the practitioner, they do have the great compassion. You know? mm, oh, they, they do desire, they do wish. Oh, how wonderful. The first one, the, what is called as you know, how wonderful it would be if all sentient beings have happiness. If all sentient beings have happiness, if all sentient beings be separated from the suffering. You mean the Hinayana practitioner? Hinayana practitioner means those uh, practitioners who works only for their benefit to achieve the moksha, to achieve the, the most blissful state, you know, personal liberation, personal liberation, right? personal nirvana. So these are Hinayana practitioners. Even they do have you know, the wish to free all sentient beings from the suffering. And they, this kind of wish, they occur again and again. <coughs> but, but what makes unique the Mahayana, the, uh, the, you know, a kind of, you know, uh, kind of compassion of the Mahayana practitioner is that no they do not they do not not only desire they do not only wish they do not they just don't aspire sending beings to have happiness they just don't you know uh, inspire themselves now there's a sense of voluntary voluntariness a true deep sense of voluntariness is involved this voluntariness is now in order to in order to free sentient beings from the suffering. I myself alone will do this. That now, you know, in British, they don't have this such a powerful, you know, courageous, this kind of you know thought. So the Mahayana beings, you know, they now. So there's a deep sense of voluntariness. So therefore, so therefore, <coughs> there's a deep sense of inner strength. There's an inner strength. There's no weakness in their mind. Those who really uh, try to take the big, you know, responsibility, they have no weakness in their mind. They are so courageous, you know, tremendously courageous people. These are. No, they just, they're just making a, such a huge, you know, uh, taking a huge responsibility. I, I myself alone will do this. <laughs> In one's own problem is insignificant. One has no time to think about one's own problem. <laughs> right? No time to think about one's own problem, you know. Just like this, you know. Then there, Master Shanti Deva say, you know, as long as space remains, as long as sentient being remains, may I remain to 
to dispel the suffering of the sentient being. Right. So, His Holiness the Lord Mohan say, you know, one's own problem is insignificant, nothing, you know. So you, your mind becomes expand. Your mind is expanded. Your mind is open. As long as, as long as space uh, remains, as long as space remains, right? so there's tremendous amount of courage. There's, that person has no expectation. No expectation, no fear. Because there is no basis for getting fear. <laughs> because the person has cultivated such a, you know, infinite altruism, which goes beyond expectation and everything, all the problems, all the trouble, right? Like this. Mm -hmm. What time? I think it is. 11 40. 11 40. Oh, 20 minutes, I will be here. We do. Yeah. <coughs> Last time we did some uh, meditation, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure, you know, if the visualization is too long, you know. Because you know, if visualization is too long, because right now we are just going for refuge, we did some visualization. If we do some kind of visualization, which each, which each of the words. <laughs> right. Later on, because in the later on, you need to do by yourself. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, I think it, so. No, I think it's good if you teach in detail, but in it, when they do themselves, mm. they can they can decide which part to be longer, which side part to be shorter. You see what I mean? Mm. If you teach more detail for people who want to do detail, they can do detail, but for people who don't have not much time, they can they can uh, decide which part to focus more. Mm. Okay. 师父有点担心说你自己做了之后呢,他教太详细,他没有时间。So <coughs> then, yeah, first we explain, you know, we don't visualize. <laughs> the visualization I will explain. <coughs><笑><笑> Last time uh, we talk about the going for refuge, right? Mm. Visualization, right? I will give you the uh, uh, two step visualization regarding to relating to this going for refuge. It's very good, you know. Need to do, you know. The first one is common. The common, uh, the common practice. The second one is something very unique. The unique one is much shorter. <laughs> Surprisingly, right? Usually, you know, unique one just longer. <laughs> Here, unique one just shorter. shorter. So. <coughs> So yeah, you can do this, you know, the visualization uh, first, you know. Mm. Uh, as we discussed, when you do the full length prostration, you know, how far you can reach up to that, uh, point, up to that you know, level, you set up the throne, right? And throne, or, you know, or from your side, you know, right, this, you know. Up to that length, you can do like this. Up to you. And then the level is here from here. Uh, then you visualize the <laughs> throne, you know, throne. 
throne supported by eight lions, eight lions. And then on that throne is, uh, you know, uh, lotus. On the lotus is a moon disc, moon cushion, right? And then on that side is Buddha Shakyamuni. <coughs> Buddha Shakyamuni is surrounded by all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. How, how big, how big the size of the uh, visual uh, uh, you know, usually it is said, you know, yeah, uh, as big as possible. Right, at, yeah, Buddha size and throne all as big as possible, you know. But then if you, if you feel uncomfortable, you know, visualize, then smaller, okay. It depends on you, right? <coughs> right. And then, you know, uh, uh, for example, with the thought, we, we are reading, right? Like we, when we read this, when we read this, we don't jump directly to the whole image, right? We, after we read this, you know, before, first we read, and then we take some time, right? We spend some time, you know. Visualization is very, you know, very important, you know. <coughs> and then we think about the, you know, the qualities of the Buddha Dharma. Buddha Jival, Dharma Jival, Sangha Jival, three you know, refuges. Right. Say, uh, Buddha say, uh, Sangi, um, the qualities of the Buddha jewel is unimaginable. Qualities of the Dharma jewel is unimaginable. The qualities of the Dharma uh, Sangha jewel is unimaginable. By cultivating the faith to these three unimaginable, you will get the unimaginable result. So this is what is stated in the Sutra. So it's not that, you know, easy, you know, you will really create a tremendous amount of marriage, you know. <coughs> Right. And then you, you know, think about the qualities of the Buddha jewel, Dharma jewel, Sangha jewel. Out of deep, you know, the faith and devotion, we do this. Right. And then rays of light, the rays of light coming from the Buddha and all the, you know, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, it comes. You know, five rays of light and five rays of nectar. Five rays of light, five rays of nectar means uh, the rays are like thread, you know, thread. You visualize something like thread, you know, uh, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, uh, green, white, red. So these five colors are like thread, you know. And then on this thread, you know, then the uh, five nectar means uh, five water, you know, visualize as water, you know, five colors. On the thread, these five water flowing, right? So it coming from their body, it coming to, to you. <clears throat> right. You are here. Your right side is your father, we visualize before right, your mother, left side mother. On your, in front is your enemy. <laughs> Somebody, someone who you don't dislike. On the back side is your close one, dear ones. So we visualize, and then they are all surrounded by all, uh, entire sentient beings. Surrounded by sentient beings. Down, right, then. The rays of light as we visualize people right. When it touches right. 
<coughs> for example when the light when the light comes darkness is dispelled instantly similarly when this comes into your body enters through your body enters through your body all your all your negativities uh, all your negative karma all your negative karma are you know uh, <coughs> Mm. Uh, coming through your pore right and then all your sicknesses sometimes you have different kinds of sicknesses that people have all the sicknesses are come are you know uh, comes through the pore in the form of blood and pus all right then all the you know all the suffering right and uh, and all the you know destructive emotions self cherishing attitude self grasping attitude all the different kinds of you know distortions which make us second in samsara we give us you know, suffering. All these are exit through all the, your openings. All part of your openings. Right. So all this are, you know, comes out of your openings and you receive the blessings of the body, speech and mind of the, all the refuge. Right, and then you you have received the blessing, the blessing for becoming enlightened. <coughs> so this is one kind of visualization relating to refuge, only refuge part. Right, and then. Then, uh, the next one is this is something very unique. You know. This is according to the uh, really uh, according to the ear whispered lineage. Something very you know special. You know, many great masters held this instruction in high regard, high respect. Sometimes they call, <coughs> sometimes they call this instruction the destroy of the samsara. Transforming, you know, or with taking the altruism, taking the altruism into the resultant stage. Altruism, altruism, altruistic right attitude, altruism. Now, how it is, right? How do we do this? Like this. <coughs> we read this, right? For example, you know, after first we read this, right, the first one, we this with a thought to free all beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma and Supreme Assembly until I reach for enlightenment. With this, take time, you know, we take time. We don't jump, you know, for immersion, <laughs> take time, you know, to do some visualization. So because of, because you have cultivated, because you have generated the altruistic mind. Because when we go for refuge, we have, we have generated the altruistic mind. <coughs> we have not only generated the altruistic mind, the wish, the aspiring uh, bodhicitta, but also we make a pledge, we make a promise that I, that I will train that I will train in the, the practices 
Bodhisattva practices in order to achieve enlightenment of myself for the benefit of entire sentient beings. So with this, you know, kind of generation of altruistic mind, the Buddha that you have visualized is so delighted. They are so delighted, right? They are so delighted that because of such a delight, the second duplicate, a duplicate arises, comes from the, the real, you know, visualized. A duplicate Buddha come. Now, uh, you mean a duplicate Buddha? Yeah, Buddha the then this Buddha Shakyamuni come and it dissolve into you. And you become Buddha Shakyamuni. Right. You become Buddha Shakyamuni and then from your heart, rays of light, the rays of light goes, you know, to every direction, you know, every direction and you have visualized all sentient beings around here, right? Yeah. Before. So this rays of light touches all the sentient beings, you know, every sentient beings, yeah. all, the, all the impure land transformed into the pure land, all the sentient beings surrounded you, all become Buddha Shakyamuni. Woman 融入了之后我们获得了佛的加持然后自己马上也变成了释迦牟尼佛的样子然后从释迦牟尼佛自己的自身的释迦牟尼佛的心中at that point, then you visualize you de you <coughs> you develop a divine pride, you know. I am a true Buddha, the fulfiller of the well being of myself and others. Then remain in that state for your few moments, right? So right. So this is the second visualization, which is very unique, you know, and uncommon only to the ear whispered lineage. You are, you are, uh, you are, uh, you are uh, storing the imprint, uh, very, you know, um, strong imprint for practicing, <laughs> for practicing <coughs> many of the wonderful sutric, sutric path and also the tantric path. Just practicing alone, just hearing, also very fortunate, very fortunate. Just practicing alone, just hearing, also very fortunate, very fortunate. 
Because sometimes all the things are not available in the book, you know, from mouth to mouth, you know. So these things are very special and very fortunate just to have able to hear. Just doing practice, tremendous merit. No, what time? <laughs> Maybe we do quick, we do quick uh, visualization and then we quickly review the uh, four immeasurables and we finish the class. <coughs> mm. Or if you want, maybe next class if you want. Uh. Well, I will do the yeah, the quick one. Uh, although you can do, although we can, but I will explain next class. Although we can do, which each each of the you know, each of the words you can visualization come. Right. Right. But then I will do all the four measurable visualization all together. Today. The, the simple one. So we visualized all the refuge field in front of you. Right. And then, as we said before, you are Buddha Shakyamuni. The race of, the race of five nectars of light and <coughs> and the nectar five rays of nectar and light emanated from your heart which from the heart of you yourself as Buddha Yamani this five rays of light and nectar touches all the sending beings surrounding around you. As soon as it enters through their body, All the negativities, all the sicknesses, all the delusions, all these are exit from your body. Some are through the pores and some are through the openings. And you You receive the blessings of the body, speech, and mind of the Buddha Shakyamuni. The beings, sentient beings, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sending beings, all the sending beings, you know. All your inner resources, such as the, the strength of your lifespan, the power of your lifespan, the power of your merit, the power of your well being, good health. All the inner resources are increased ever. And especially, and especially the, re <coughs> the realization of the four immeasurable are born into your mind. You are tremendously joyful. For having been able to cultivate such a joy. The joy of having freed all sentient beings from the negative karma and suffering. And you also, on your part, you also feel tremendous, tremendous joy to, to have been able to fulfill the well being of oneself and all others. And try to remain in that state for as long as you can. Okay. Any question? So for the last part of the visualization, uh, just to clarify, um, the, the lights from the self, Second Muni Buddha, touches every being and all their negative karma, sufferings, are, sickness are removed. Mm -hmm. And do we visualize the lights come back? No, no. No? The light and the No, 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 not light come back, yeah. No need. We should not need. Okay. And then, and, and then we generate a, a sense of joy. Yeah, how sense of joy. How fulfilled that you have, yeah. The, the, the mission. Yeah, mission for fulfilling the well being of my the next week I will talk to finish the image for miserable. Shaka <laughs> taking too long. <laughs> Good. <laughs> 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 Any question? <laughs>
什么样的问题可以提出来，先你们在 line 上说话，是不是可以听得到？来，有问题吗？啊，行。有什么问题，大家可以提出来。如果没有问题的话呢，那我们就回向结束。Okay, I think no, maybe we 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 do a, a dedication. Please. Uh, dedication. Which which verse you need send them the Chinese? Hmm. Which verse of the dedication? Hmm. Okay. Forty. Hmm. <coughs> Forty-seven. Page forty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Let me. I can find it. Page forty-seven. Page forty-seven. Usually, you know, uh, I think yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. What we do is you know, because uh, I'm we are trying to explain this uh, teaching as a you know, mm -hmm. if people are interest, you know. Then before they come, they can do their own, you know, a prayer. Ah, I see. Right. Okay. Prayer because I'm not trying to teach I as a teacher and other as a student, not in that way. Just purely from in the form of the lecture, right? Ah, I see. So then later, you know, what need to do, you know, I see. Then if the prayer is done, then for, you know, you, you know, uh, the dedication then follows, you know. Because we didn't do, but in my case, I already did. You know, <laughs> but I don't know. if some people who are interested, then you can do, and then this you can do. You can do by letter. You know. okay. Otherwise, it's just. Then, 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 啊，那如果像我们同学们自己呢，在上课之前自己做自己的这个啊 prayer 啊祈祷，然后我们自己来上完课呢，自己做自己的回想。然后他呢，只是说啊，我们这个讲课呢，他他是以这种这种啊分享啊 lecture 的这种方式来讲，并不是以学生的角度和弟子的角度这样子来讲。OK， 所以大家我们自己做自己的这个回想。这个是呢 ，they are they are you know 啊。Eight types of you know explanation. Eight <laughs> types of explanation. Right. My uh, way of explain uh, explanation is based on something like you know uh, kind of discussion for you uh, to help you really you know how to uh, uh, just trying to you know uh, just trying to. Uh, Introduce and explain the right thing. You know, okay. What is presented in Buddha's teaching? You know, in just some of us teaching, right? Giving you right information. Just trying to provide the right information, right? Sometimes you know, we will get confused. You know. That's what I'm trying to do. No, it's almost like uh, not a formal, you know, formal, you know. Then we, <laughs> I as soon as it, yes, you know, you know, yeah, my based on you know just discussion, not other you know. Things, you know. Other things, you know, then yeah, there's a kind of relationship between you know, teachers and other things. Yeah, we just have this kind of discussion. We 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 have this kind of discussion. 祈愿，然后最后呢，做自己的回向。OK， 好。那。我又要看一下。又要看一下。OK， 那谢谢大家。Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
I will later on if they have time. Yes, you already put off. Oh.